and welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. So you're thinking about getting pigs. Well, the Irish call the pig the gentleman who pays the rent because the pig can be a workhorse on your homestead. So today we're going to give you some information uh, about how to get ready and the things that you need to keep in mind when you go to getting your first set of pigs for your homestead. All right, so what can a pig actually do for you on your homestead? Well, besides the obvious, by supplying you with the most delicious bacon, pork chops, ham, Boston butt on the planet, your pig can do things for, for you. Like the stuff that you can't compost, you can feed to the pigs. That's where the slop bucket comes in. Pigs can help actually help you clear land. And in my opinion, they do a lot better of a job than goats. If you have an area where you want to start a new garden, you can put your pigs in that area. They will rototill it up and fertilize it for you all in the same time. There's been uh, stories and people talking about how they use their pigs to be able to fix holes in, the, in their dams around their ponds. Uh, you just really got to kind of think outside the box when it comes to your pigs and they can do a lot of work for you on your homestead. All right, so right off the bat, let's, let's just knock this right out of the park real quick. What type of a commitment do pigs take from you to successfully raise them on your homestead? <clears throat> that's a two, you can get two different answers from that. And I know that's not what you want to hear, but it really depends on you. And I say that because if you're going to raise pigs and head more down the sustainable lifestyle where you want to also breed pigs then your commitment level is going to be a little bit more than if you buy two or three wieners a year and then just raise them up during the summertime and then butcher them in the fall now either way if you ask my wife when it comes to the commitment level of pigs she'll tell you the pigs are one of the easiest animals to raise as long as they don't get out of their pen if they're getting out of their pen, then they're the most frustrating animal to raise. But in all honesty, when it comes to the commitment level of a pig, you're not as committed as you are, or tied down, as you say, as you are as with something like a dairy cow, but you are a little bit more committed than, say, your chickens. Okay, so what does it actually take to raise these pigs? Well again the first thing that you have to do is decide on what type of pig you want to raise now we did a video on the different types of pigs and we'll put that link in the description or on a card up around here and then once you make that decision the other decision that you have to make is are you gonna breed them or are you just gonna raise some wieners once you make those two decisions you're out of the starting blocks when it comes to raising your own pigs. All right, so you've made your decisions. You know what type of pigs you're gonna raise and you know if you're just gonna raise some wieners or if you're gonna start a breeding program on your homestead. Okay, so then the next thing that you need to decide is take a walk around your homestead and think about an area that you can place these pigs. You can put them in one specific area and that's where they stay all the time, which I would strongly suggest if you're just going to raise, you know, one or two wieners, three wieners for you and your family every year, and that's all you want to do. Put, build yourself a designated pig pen area where they can go and hang out and you can fatten them up. Now, if you're going to start a breeding program, take a long walk around your homestead. Think about where you may want to expand. You've got, you may have some brush and brambles and stuff that you may want to get rid of. And what I'm saying is take full advantage 
of the pigs being a workhorse for you and put them to work as you're starting your pig program there on your homestead and put them in an area that you always wanted to grow a garden. Put them in that area, let them till them up, let them fertilize that ground for you. Put these pigs to work for you on your homestead. All right, so the next point I wanna cover is more for those of you that are just going to raise a couple of wieners and then I'm going to talk more where the breeders will want to really pay attention. So now let's talk about housing. If you're only raising one, definitely if you're only raising one, um, but if you got two or three, you want to build them some type of a shelter, a shelter that they can get out of the sun a shelter that they can get out of the elements but if you're gonna have more than three at the max I had three may even be pushing it I really wouldn't worry about a shelter that much because as they try to lay on top of each other in the colder months if you start in the colder months they're gonna end up just busting up the housing that you make anyway trust me on that from experience but they just need something to get out of the sunlight on the hot days and a place to go in on those, some of those cool early spring nights. That way they can stay warm. For those of you that are doing a breeding program, you are going to want to build a nursery. So keep that in mind. And that nursery is just going to be for that sow that's getting ready to throw her piglets. You just place her in there. That way she has a good, clean, dry place and able to birth those piglets. And you may want to have an area that you can install a heat lamp if she's going to throw during the winter months. All right, so let's talk about the question that's probably on everybody's mind. All right, Jason, how much food and water do pigs need for me to, in order for me to be able to raise them successfully? Water, simplest one right off the bat. Everywhere that you'll research, they'll tell you anywhere that one pig needs anywhere from two to five gallons of water a day. I'm going to tell you 10 gallons of water a day. Pretty much give them access to as much water as they can possibly stand, especially if you are in the south. We get hot, we get hot fast, and they need to stay hydrated to help them uh, avoid any type of heat illness. Now when it comes to food, from the time that you bring that wiener home till he hits about 100 pounds, give that piglet as much food as she can eat. I would suggest putting in what, what they call a free feeder. It has the lid on it, and they can walk up to it, flip it up, eat, walk away. The simplest way to do it is once they hit 100 pounds, go ahead and feed them twice a day, but give them just enough food that they can eat it all within 15 to 20 minutes, and that's it. You don't wanna overfeed them and start to get them too fat, too fast, because then you'll have, especially on your, your bacon breeds, you'll end up having more fat in an unhealthy pig than a pig with a decent amount of fat and one that's lean and healthy for you so we've covered a lot but i really want to spend a few minutes or a little bit more time here with you and talk about your fencing options now if you're building a permanent pig pen build that puppy as solid as you can use concrete blocks and build you up a wall about waist high and then maybe run some barbed wire across the top of it to stop them from uh, jumping over if you get a pig that thinks he's he could be in the summer olympics but for the most part in that pig pen as long as they have access to good shade plenty of water and food they're not gonna they're not really gonna try to jump over that that block wall for you now if you're planning on breeding and having a large number of pigs and putting them to work on your your homestead well the very first thing that you have to do is build some type of a small structure off of a off of your barn or off of a shed and train them to electric fencing if you're going to use electric fencing which let's all be honest when we're talking about moving animals around multiple times in a year or 
the electric fencing is the best way to go. But training those pigs on that electric fencing is uber important or you're going to have an extreme headache on your hand and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to end up walking away from raising pigs. So how do you train your pigs? You build a solid structure, put them in there, put the electric fence in there and then start to lessen their square footage with that electric fencing so when they touch it they'll learn that that's an owie and they don't want to be around it. Now if you're in you want to put them in an area and you're like they're going to be here for a while I don't want to rely on electric fencing and you want to build a solid structure or you are like okay Jason what what materials can I use to build that solid structure to train them on the electric fencing <clears throat> you can use pallets you can use grates you could use cattle panels uh, hog fencing you can use those things something that's a physical barrier because that electric is just psychological so you want something that's a good solid physical barrier <clears throat> one of the things that we learned like we used pallets to build an area these pallets like this but <clears throat> when they get old and over time they'll start to wear out but we started running bob wire down near the bottom and that barb would hit their snout and they would back away from it so bob wire is also i wouldn't do bob wire by itself i would do it like a force multiplier and it will help you keep your pigs in in that area cattle panels hog fencing grates and pallets now with your grates and pallets make sure you screw them together use t-posts to hold them up get them connected so that way they weigh more so that way if they're in there rooting and they get their nose up underneath it they can't lift it up or if they do it ends up being way too much weight for them for them to be and they won't flip it over on you so that covers pretty much the basis of what you were thinking about all right so right now i'm going to give you some free information that we've learned over time uh, with dealing with raising pigs here on our homestead if you are in the south, turn the volume up and get away all the distractions and particularly pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say. Pigs can die from a heat-related illness fast. So it is your job to make sure that they have ample shade and a way to cool off. Now a way to cool off, one of the things that, that we did at one time is we gave them access to a small corner of our pond. Now, pigs are different than cows. Pigs will not defecate in your pond. They will come back up on land and do their business on land, and they will lay in that pond, in that water during the heat of the summer, and they look like a bunch of little hippos with their little heads sticking up all over the place. <clears throat> so you can give them some type of an access to water where they can get cool. And even if that means coming out two, three times a day and spraying water in a certain area to where they can build a mud pit where they can get in there and waller around in that mud because not only does that mud help keep them cool, but that mud is also their sunblock because the pig can get sunburned. So they'll, they'll waller around in that mud to help protect themselves from getting sunburned. Well, I hope this video has encouraged you to consider and think about moving forward with raising pigs on your homestead. Raising pigs has been, for the most part, an absolute joy for us here on the Big Bear Homestead. And you really can't argue with fresh, homegrown bacon. Thanks for coming by the Big Bear Homestead. God bless. And have a nice day.